Hello, in this video we're going to solve this differential equation using the method of variation of parameters. So first let's briefly go through the steps. So the first step when solving a differential equation using variation of parameters is to find y sub c which is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2. This is called the complementary function or the complementary solution. You basically pretend that your differential equation is equal to zero and then you find your characteristic equation and go from there. We'll do it in a few minutes. Two. The next step is to compute the w's. So w is equal to the Wronskian of y1 and y2. So in the first row you have y1, y2. In the second row you have the derivative of y1 and y2. Then you want to compute w1. So the trick is for w1 you delete the first column of w and you replace it with 0 and f of x and then you keep the second column. You might be wondering, well hey, what is f of x? Well f of x is whatever you have here. Okay, This is your f of x. The thing is, you have to make sure there's a 1 here and there is in this case, so we're good. If there was like a 5 here or something, you would have to divide by the 5 and that would get absorbed into your f of x. w2 is the same as w1, except you keep the first column and this time you replace the second column with 0 and f of x. It's pretty easy to memorize, so again w1 you delete the first column, w2 you delete the second column. The third step is what separates the easy problems from the hard problems. It's the u's. So u1 is going to be the integral of w1 over w dx and u2 is going to be the integral of w2 over w dx. Sometimes these can be difficult integrals, sometimes they can be easy. The fourth step is to compute y sub p, which is your particular solution. This is equal to u1 y1 plus u2 y2. And the very last step, I'll write it up here, step five, is the final answer. The final answer is y equals yc plus yp. Okay, let's go ahead and work through this very carefully. And as we work through it, uh, we'll talk about the steps. So the first step is to find y sub c. So we pretend it's equal to zero, and then we write down what's called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So because there's a second derivative, we're going to have m squared, and the y is just going to become a 1. And you set this equal to zero. You subtract the 1, so you get m squared equals negative 1. Take the square root. So we get m equals plus or minus i. Recall that whenever you have complex conjugates, they have the form 0 plus or minus 1 times i. So alpha plus or minus beta times i. And all of this, alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 1. And recall the formula for y sub c was c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. Because alpha is 0, e to the 0 is 1, so we just get y sub c equals c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. So now we can identify uh, y1 and y2, but notice we've completed our first step. <laughs> so one down. We've made some progress. Okay, so then y1 is just going to be cosine, and y sub 2 is going to be sine. Now, if you if you instead put sine first, that's okay. Your y1 and your y2 can be different than what I have. You'll still get the same answer at the very end of the problem. Okay, I'm just going to do this just to separate our thought processes. So now we're going to step 2. We have to compute the w's. So w is equal to the Wronskian of the y's. So you have cosine x and then sine x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine and the derivative of sine is cosine. Then we do this times this, so cosine squared minus and then 
this times this, so plus sine squared. Oh, how convenient. How nice. This is equal to 1. That's really, really good. That's, that's fantastic. Let's do w1 now. Because that's an identity, right? It's equal to 1. Really nice. So replace the first column with 0 and f of x. f of x is whatever is here, right? Sine squared. Then you keep your uh, second column. So sine x, cosine x. So this times this will give you 0. Minus this times this. Ooh, sine cubed. Interesting. So w1 is going to be negative sine cubed. This will, this will be fun. We'll get to do some, some integrals here. So a little bit harder than uh, perhaps some of the other problems that you may have done already. Um, this one will be a little more interesting. And then w2, we'll keep the uh, first uh, column. So cosine x, negative sine x. And then we replace the second one with 0 f of x, so 0 sine squared. So this times this minus this times this. So we get cosine x times sine squared minus 0. So w2 is equal to cosine x sine squared. Really nice problem. Um, these, the integrals that we get, that we're going to get now, I think, in step 3, because we've completed step 2, by the way, um, are going to be kind of interesting and they're not like super easy but they're not super hard either they're just like they're good they're good problems okay so let's compute the u's let me switch color for the u's let's go to let's go back to green so u1 is equal to the integral of w1 over w dx so w is 1 that's really nice so it's just basically w1 so it's going to be negative sine cubed Okay, so whenever you have powers of sine and cosine, the rule is you want to save a copy of the one that's being raised to the odd power. That's the rule. So if you have odd power of sine or cosine, save a copy of the one that's being raised to an odd power. So we're going to save a copy of sine. Okay. And then because we're saving a sine, u has to be cosine. So I'm going to write that up here. So u is going to be cosine. Let's say there's no cosine in the problem. You're right, there's not. So we have to make this into a cosine because this will be sine squared is always 1 minus the other one squared. So it's 1 minus cosine squared. And then you have sine x. So if you didn't know this, if you didn't have this memorized, you can just play with it and then like hope you get it right and hope you figure it out, um, which is an okay strategy. However, it's better to just know it. So whenever you have an odd power of sine or cosine, uh, save a copy of the odd one. So if you have like sine to the fourth, cosine to the fifth, save a cosine. So you, you factor it out. That's what I mean by save. So when you save a sine, u is the other one. Then you use identities to convert the rest. So sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. It's always 1 minus the other one squared. So then du is going to be negative sine x dx. But we, oh, we do have a negative in the problem. So let's go ahead and make that full substitution. So check this out. The negative sine x dx is going to be our du. And we're left with 1 minus u squared. Integrating this, we're going to get u minus u cubed over 3. Don't worry about the plus c. u was cosine. So this is cosine x minus cosine cubed x over 3. I'm going to write it again over here. u1 is equal to cosine x minus cosine cubed of x over 3. I'm going to put it in a box. Notice I box all the important stuff. It really helps uh, you keep track of what's going on. Also, if you're, if you're taking a class and you're doing this like for an actual class, it helps wh whoever's grading your work like tremendously because they can see what's going on. So u sub 2 is uh, the integral of w2 over w. So let's see, so w2 over w dx. So that's equal to, where's w2? It's right here. So w is 1, so it doesn't matter. So it'll be cosine x sine squared. And again, we have powers of sine and cosine. So cosine is being raised to an odd power. So we save a copy of cosine. So what that basically means is you put it next to the dx. It's not necessary to do it in this case because it's already there, but boom, there it is. And then so u is the other one. So you'll let u be sine. 
So du is cosine x dx. So this becomes u squared, and then all of this is du, going kind of fast, sorry. So this is equal to u cubed over 3. Don't worry about the plus c. And then u is sine, so sine cubed x over 3. All right, I'm going to write that down again and put it in a box. So u2 is this piece here. Okay. All right, good stuff. So, now we have the use, and that's the hard part. The rest of it is not so bad. So yp, if you go to another color, is u1y1 plus u2y2. So yp is, so u1 was the cosine x minus cosine cubed x over 3. Y1, I forgot what it was. Uh, it's cosine x. Okay, it's cosine x. It's at the beginning, right? This is this is at the beginning of the problem, right? With the yc, remember that was the y1 and the y2. And then plus uh, u2, which, which is here in a box. The boxes are really nice, right? I mean, you, it's absolutely necessary for me. <laughs> so uh, y sub 2 is sine x. I'm lost without the boxes. We should probably distribute this. So let's distribute. So y sub p will be cosine squared x minus cosine to the fourth of x over 3 plus sine to the fourth of x over 3. Minus. Ooh, some identities. Yes, yes, there are things you can do here, right? You can, you can factor out a one-third. You can do sine to the fourth minus cosine to the fourth, and then that's like the difference of squares. And then you can use an identity. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, uh, but we're just gonna we're just gonna stop here. <laughs> so it's not necessary. Um, so now we have to find the final answers. The final answer is y equals y c plus y p. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write down y c up here. So you see it. It was c one cosine x plus c two sine x. I'm going off memory. Um, let me see if that's right. Yep, it is. Okay. All right. So you just add them up. So we get C1 cosine x plus C2 sine x plus yp, which is cosine squared x minus, I'm going to write it like this, one-third cosine to the fourth x. It's a four. And then plus one-third sine to the fourth x. And that should be good. That should be the final answer, right? Y is equal to all of this stuff. That's your solution um, to your differential equation. So I hope this video uh, has been beneficial. Good luck.